JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 10th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar pulled back against uh, most of the other major currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It gained only against JPY while it was found virtually unchanged against, uh, against CHF. The main gainer was uh, the Euro. Now the retreat in the US dollar and the relative weakness in the other safe haven currencies, Yen and Franc, suggests that risk appetite may have improved yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that um, uh, we see that all global indices are under our radar traded in the green, with the European ones uh, winning the most, with an average of uh, 6.26, uh, uh, with an average of 6.26%. Uh, Appetite uh, was still strong, but uh, not that strong during the U.S. session and somewhat weaker during uh, the, Asia the Asian session today. Now, what may have encouraged investors to push uh, the, buy the buy button may have been uh, news that Russia and Ukraine expressed, uh, expressed willingness, willingness to talk over a diplomatic solution in their crisis. That said, the reason why Wall Street and Asian markets saw less gains that, uh, uh, than their European uh, counterparts may have been uh, headlines of Ukraine accusing Russia for bombing a, a children's hospital in the city of uh, Mariupol. This may have raised fears that the road towards finding common ground may not be an easy one. So with that in mind, we also believe that any resolution will not happen overnight. The war continues and thus we will maintain the view that the path of least resistance for equities as well as the euro is to the downside, remains to the downside, despite the very strong recovery, uh, the very strong recovery yesterday. We will still class uh, that recovery as a, as a corrective phase. We prefer to wait for headlines pointing to concrete evidence that both sides are indeed working towards a diplomatic solution. Oil prices were also affected by the headlines over, over negotiations between the two nations, but that was, uh, that was not the only case. Another reason for the sharp and strong retreat in oil prices may have been reports that the United Arab Emirates and Iraq said they would support increasing oil production in order to offset some disruptions caused by the sanctions on, uh, on Russia's energy market. Now, as for today, there are two important economic events on the agenda, and those are the ECB monetary policy decision and the US CPIs for February. Kicking off with the ECB, at its uh, latest gathering, this bank kept policy unchanged, but uh, at the press conference following the decision, President Lagarde said that inflation remained elevated for longer than previously thought, and that the economy was hurt less than anticipated by the pandemic. She also added that the March and June meetings would be essential for evaluating their guidance, which means that, which meant, let's say, which back then meant uh, that they could, after all, decide to lift uh, rates this year. Since then, inflation accelerated further, but we also witnessed the crisis in Ukraine, which may well undermine economic growth in Europe. Also, also let's not forget that uh, Lagarde pushed against expectations over a summer rate increase even before Russia's invasion in Ukraine. Thus, we expect uh, the bank to highlight the risks uh, arising from the war 
and signal that it will take a more patient approach on interest rates than previously thought. That said, they will still need to fight inflation pressures and they may decide to do so by ending their asset purchases earlier. In any case, a dovish take on interest rates could bring the euro under renewed selling interest. Now passing the ball to the US CPIs, expectations are for the headline rate to have risen further to 7.9% year over year from 7.5%, but the core one is anticipated to have ticked down to 5.9% from 6%. In our view, this suggests that the main contributor to the spike in headline inflation may be the surging energy prices. Last week, when testifying before Congress, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that he may support a quarter point hike at the upcoming gathering, disappointing those expecting a 50 basis points rise. However, he also added that he is ready to use larger or more frequent rate hikes if inflation doesn't slow. Thus, despite underlying inflation expected to have slowed somewhat, both rates are still well above the Fed's objective objective of 2% and with energy prices keep surging in early March, the headline rate could drift higher uh, this month as well. Thus, if the forecasts are met, we see decent chances for market participants to bring forward, forward their high expectations, something which could support the US dollar and perhaps halt the recovery in equities. Now, tomorrow during the early European session, we get the monthly UK GDP for January alongside the industrial and manufacturing production rates for the, for the month. No forecast is available for the GDP. While both the IP and MP rates are expected to have held steady at 0.3% month over month and 0.2% month over month, respectively. At the latest Bank of England gathering, officials voted 5 to 4 for a rate hike by 25 basis points, with the four descenders calling for a 50 basis points increase. Now, since then, we've been highlighting that uh, only one member needed to be convinced uh, for that to happen at, uh, at the upcoming gathering. And the accelerating CPIs for January indeed added to speculation on that front. However, this was the case around a week before Russia invaded Ukraine, with the events unfolding since then, market-wise raising uh, concerns over the, um, over the global economic performance, and especially in Europe, something, uh, something evident by the tumbles in the euro and the pound. Thus, with all that in mind, we don't believe that the Bank of England will now stay willing to hike by 50 basis points at at its upcoming gathering, even if Friday's data come in better than expected. Actually, we now question officials' willingness to even hike by 25 basis points. In any case, according to the UK overnight index swaps uh, forward curve, market participants believe that um, a, quarter uh, excuse me, a quarter point hike could still, could, uh, still be delivered. Now, the nation's trade balance for January is also coming out at the same time, but no forecast is available. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.